Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and kick us off. Um, my name is Bethany Zach. I am um, gonna be kicking this off for us today. First of all, I just want to welcome everybody um, and say that Gordon Food Service, Back of House, and Science are all really excited to have you here today. Thank you for joining us. We know that the use of technology has only grown since early this year, and we want to really help operators get as much value out of their technology as they can. So today we have Andy and Louisa from Science, who have been in the trenches of this massive transformation over the past four months. Um, just a little bit about science before I hand it over. Science was founded in 2014 as a boutique IT consultancy serving independent retailers, cafes, and small businesses. Uh, in 2019, they shifted toward a, toward a subscription model and joined the Food Foundry Accelerator Program to streamline their service and make the transition to a restaurant-focused startup. Um, Science was one of seven companies selected by Relish Works and Gordon Food Service to join Food Foundry, an example of the kinds of investments that Gordon Food Service has made to help restaurant owners and operators really grow their business through the use of technology. They are going to share their knowledge about technology and ho our hope is to have an open discussion that results in increased efficiencies and lower cost for restaurant owners and operators. Andy and Louisa, you want to take it away? Sure thing. Bethany, thank you so much. Um, we're super happy to be here and we're glad everybody was able to join. Um, I'm Andy. I'm co-founder of Science and I just wanted to put it out to the room here. Has anybody been to one of those weddings where the pastor asks you to turn to your neighbor and shake hands and introduce yourself? We are totally not going to do that today, even virtually. But what we would like to do is for everyone to use the chat function. And Louisa, if you could switch over to uh, slide two so they can see the questions. Um, we want you to tell us about yourself and tell us the following things. Uh, what point of sale system do you use? What third party ordering and delivery apps do you use? Do you have a patio? Do you self deliver? And whose job is it to make all of these things work for your restaurant? And um, the questions are posted. Uh, but send us your answers via chat because this will help us uh, kind of guide the discussion. Um, and maybe we can tailor some of our, our responses to specific people. Um, we really want to make this interactive. We really want to uh, see, you know, we promised you'd have the opportunity to stump the nerds. So I hope somebody does it. Um, and uh, there's really two reasons. Again, we want to learn as much as we can about the specific issues that owners and operators who are on the call today are uh, experiencing. But also we're gonna give away a $25 Amazon gift card. And so if we know who you are and we saw your answers, then we can put your name in the hat. And I think the nice people at RelishWorks will help us uh, make that selection at the end. All right, I'll give everyone a few minutes to throw some comments in the chat, but feel free to do that along the entire presentation, we're going to include everyone who makes a comment uh, in that drawing. So um, even if you're going along and come up with another question along the way, we definitely encourage you to. Um, we want this to be as interactive as possible. I'm just realizing that I cannot see the Q&A because I'm sharing my screen. So Andy, you might have to uh, sort of field some of those comments, um, but I will just continue on. Great. All right, so Andy introduced himself. He's co-founder and CEO of Science. He has over 25 years of IT experience. Uh, I'm Luisa Castellanos, co-founder and COO of Science. Um, I have 10 years of customer experience. I'm a two-time entrepreneur. We both really love restaurants. We got into this business because we loved all the unique things that were going on. Um, with independent operators, technology was always changing. Um, it was sort of like a science experiment. All the changes in technology that uh, come, come and go all the time, dealing with new things. Um, so we really got excited by that um, and decided to really focus on restaurants in the last um, year. So obviously with COVID and everything going on, it's been a very interesting uh, change that we've been dealing with. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about what we've seen, um, where we see the technology trends going and how you can better improve your business as you're trying to come up with new technologies to run your business. Um, so just a little overview, there are over, over a hundred or over a million restaurants um, in North America. And so we 
know that every single one of these restaurants is going through a tough time right now, um, especially the independent operators. Um, we specifically work with restaurants uh, in Chicago or based in Chicago, but we also have customers in LA and New York. Um, we offer our remote tech support services to restaurants everywhere. So um, we definitely hop on the phone 24 hours a day, nights and weekends, dealing with point of sale, Wi-Fi, websites, online ordering, reservations, you name it. Um, so we've definitely been keeping up with it as much as we can these last few months. Um, and so I'm sure all of you are asking yourselves, how do we keep ourselves up and running? Um, and so hopefully we can give you a few tips that will, um, you can apply to your business. And if you have other questions during the, the presentation today or after, um, we are uh, here to help. So hopefully we can get to know some of your businesses a little better and come up with some solutions. Um, so this is a, a picture of a crowded restaurant, which we all uh, remember those days, um, not so much anymore, but obviously restaurants cannot run anymore without technology. Um, and so back in the day when we were helping restaurants, a lot of our problems revolved around the music going out on a busy Friday night or uh, orders not processing to the kitchen. Uh, operators just don't have time to deal with all that technology on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that's where we come in. We answer their calls, text, emails, chats, um, and try and save the day when we can. Um, and so most importantly, you're gonna hear this topic a lot throughout the day, um, throughout the presentation. Your orders do not process without the internet. And so that's gonna be one of our biggest topics that we're gonna focus on. Um, this is actually an example of one of our customers that we've been helping over the last few months. They actually opened two and soon to be three new locations, Go Get Em Tiger. Um, they're a coffee chain in Los Angeles. Um, and so we helped them implement a new online ordering process that allowed them to get orders from third party apps integrated into their point of sale. So they're not going through every day and punching in every single order twice. I know a lot of you have maybe two or three or four tablets all connected and you're trying to get them all to work together. Um, so this is sort of one of our success stories that we're really excited about. Um, they have a brand new website. They're doing all sorts of pantry items and grocery, um, really fun, exciting concept um, to be involved with. Uh, all right, so we definitely want to know more about what problems you guys are having. If you don't want to share them in the chat and you'd rather talk to us offline, um, we are offering a free consultation. Um, and so that includes everything from, you know, if you're dealing with third party apps and you're paying too much in commission fees, or if you're having spotty Wi Fi on your patio and you don't know what appliances you need, um, just reach out. We're going to share our contact information at the end. Um, and following the presentation, we'll send out some details on that. Um, but it, it is really up to you, whatever problem you're dealing with. Um, we understand that every business is unique, that we don't, that one size doesn't fit all with technology. We are platform agnostic. So we, we don't say, okay, everyone has to go with this point of sale. And so that's why we want to get to know your businesses a little better so that we can help solve those problems more efficiently. All right, so Andy, I will pass it over to you to go into more details on these questions. Okay, great, Louisa, thank you. Um, so far, I think I saw one response in the chat. And so let's be participatory if we can. We just wanna know your point of sale and we have nothing to sell by the way. And so we're just curious as to what kind of issues you're experiencing that will help us guide the conversation later. But, um, Definitely, uh, you know, some of the things, you know, the questions that I think people need to ask themselves, and you need to do it not just now, but every once in a while, because the technology platforms for restaurants have changed so much, really in the last six years and, and seven years with, with um, the shift over to uh, mobile uh, point of sale and cloud point of sale, that it's always worth reinvestigating what might be out there that might work better for your restaurant because we still run into people with older systems and I'm not advocating that everybody just scrap what they have, but just be aware of the things that are out there. 
And some of the questions that we tell people to make sure that they know the answers to, and we're surprised that sometimes people don't, is um, for example, what am I paying for processing? Right, if you think of the cloud-based point of sale systems out there, for example, like Square and Upserve and others, all of these charge flat percentages and transaction fees. And you know, that can range anywhere from like 2.49 to 2.9% plus up to 15% or 15 cents per transaction. And you know, depending on, on your, uh, the type of restaurant that you operate, that can really be uh, quite a bit, especially if you're, you know, a quick service or you're doing coffee and you have, you know, average transactions between six or eight bucks. That can really be meaningful. But the thing is that not everybody knows when we have this conversation is that um, a lot of these companies are flexible. So even if you're hearing that like, oh, Upserve charges 2.49% plus 15 cents per transactions, it's not necessarily always the case. And so you always have the opportunity to negotiate um, we've seen customers of ours have been able to negotiate their rates from like 2.6% down to 2.2% and from 15 cents per transaction down to 7 cents per transaction. And all of these point of sale companies, for example, are feeling some of the pain that you are right now and it really makes it a buyer's market. So if you think it's time for a change or there are things that your systems don't do that you need them to, it, you're, you're, you're in the catbird seat as far as making that shift right now. A lot of these aren't even that expensive. Some of them charge no monthly fees because what they're really after is your processing anyhow. Some of them charge very low uh, you know, monthly software fees, but there's a handful of, of uh, providers out there that are almost giving away the hardware. And so don't forget how much negotiating power you have right now. Um, sometimes we find people that are using a specific point of sale system and the reason they're doing that is because their payments processor told them that's the only one that's going to work with that. And I, I, you know, without naming too many, um, I would say we see that from time to time. People say, uh, oh yeah, we have to use this one because our banker says that's the only one that works with that kind of processing. First of all, it's usually not the case because with the advent of cloud computing, there are more and more integrations and APIs that allow these systems to talk to each other. So you have more options than you probably realize. Um, another question that we uh, would tell you to consider is whether you have the infrastructure in your restaurant to support either an upgraded or a new point of sale system. And a good example of that would be if you look at some of the um, older and more established point of sale systems like Aloha and Micros, those are very premise-based solutions. They usually have a server and the way that printing and things like that works is very different from the way things work um, with some of the, the cloud point of sale systems. And so before you, know, you decide to make a switch or you make an upgrade from a premise-based solution to something like a cloud-based or tablet-based solution, um, you wanna be aware that you need to have a partner uh, who understands how your restaurant is wired and how that can be reconfigured in order to accommodate a new system. We see this with some frequency that a restaurant calls us and says, hey, we just switched to, or we're switching to this system, but then they just told us that it's not gonna work and we need to figure something else out because you know, we've gotta switch in order to get these better rates or to be able to take online orders and things like that. And honestly, it, you know, no slight against salespeople, but salespeople rarely know whether your infrastructure is gonna be compatible with the system they're selling. And it's just not their job. Their job is to get out there and knock on doors and sell. Um, but uh, some examples that we've encountered recently is we had a customer that uh, all of a sudden they can't serve people indoors, but they have access to a patio uh, across the street. And a point of sale vendor told them that they would be able to use the system over there. What they didn't consider is that there was no connectivity to their network from uh, that patio back to the restaurant where everything else is located. And so we were able to find a solution for them and it was a win for everybody because the customer needs all these features, especially the online ordering features and everything. But it, um, it's the kind of thing that you wanna have a trusted partner out there and it could be, you know, it could be your internal IT person, it could be the third party IT company that supports you um, or even just get on the phone with the actual support team from the point of sale company. Um, uh, another thing to consider is uh, redundancy. So it used to be that, you know, or at least for the last five or six years, 
there were a number of point of sale uh, systems out there that had a real, what they call a really robust uh, offline mode, which means if your internet connection went down, you would still be able to process payments by swiping the card and then the uh, system would hang on to those uh, tokenized authorizations until your internet connectivity was restored. And that was fine because everybody knows, you know, the cable company drops once in a while. However, now that the majority, if not all of your orders are coming through third party delivery and through integrations in your point of sale system or your point of sale systems, native online ordering platform, those orders aren't going to get there unless you're connected to the internet, you know, and so it's very cost effective to um, install a redundant internet connection. That means that the router that uh, sits in the middle of your point of sale network, that can have two internet connections instead of one. So if Comcast goes down, it can still use the AT&T connection. Or if Spectrum isn't working, it can default over to um, a 4G LTE connection. And the costs of things like this can be anywhere from 40 to 80 bucks um, per month. But if you think about, oh, I don't know, about an hour or two of lost sales um, because of an internet outage, the return on investment is pretty, pretty quick on things like this because we all know internet's not perfect. So um, another thing that we tell people to uh, consider is, um, you know, a lot of these point of sale systems out there, they come with uh, a basic product and a pro product. And that pro product is gonna be packed with features. It's gonna have inventory, food costing, dashboard, um, you know, time tracking, everything else. But what we do find from time to time is that some people are signed up for pro and they absolutely don't need it because maybe it's because of regulatory compliance issues or something, they're using an ADP time clock. And so they don't need to track the time on the point of sale. Um, they don't necessarily, maybe they're not taking inventory we do see a lot of that out there where people have a pretty good idea of what's on in, in stock, but they're not um, taking inventory on a granular basis. And that's an important feature for an organization that can use it, but it's an expensive feature for an organization that doesn't use it. And the difference between using like the core or basic product from some point of sale companies and the uh, pro product, it could be like $300 a month. And it's $300 a month that a, you could spend on internet redundancy, but also, you know, you could, that could be going into employee checks. Um, so those are other things to consider. Um, let's see, support is a big issue with the point of sale companies. Luis, if you could go to slide 11, sorry. Um, what we've seen as far as uh, the kind of tech support you can expect from point of sale companies right now is, um, you know, there's, there's a whole bunch I could mention, typically cloud-based ones, uh, that they, it used to be you called the number and they picked up on one ring and uh, you got the answer you needed. And that worked a lot of the time. But what we saw during, you know, I would say by the middle of April is a lot of these companies had either started to outsource some of their support uh, calls or they had started to, um, they reduced their field implementation teams. And one of the things that's really changed between even the best point of sale providers out there is it used to be you call one ring, someone would answer and, and help you with your problem. Now there are longer wait times and we find out that sometimes there's a lot less knowledge on the other end of the phone line. And the reason that's frustrating is because A, you didn't have 20 minutes to spend on that issue in the first place. And B, it might be an issue that 20 other restaurants in the area are all experiencing, but you don't know that until you talk to someone. And then when you talk to someone, sometimes they're, 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 they just don't feel like experts. That's been a big shift. And so, you know, partnering with like a platform agnostic company that understands restaurants, understands technology, sometimes can be a faster uh, way to resolution on a lot of these issues. And uh, an example I'll give you is, um, one of the bigger point of sale systems out there, and they're mostly focused on retail, but we do see them used in restaurants is Shopify. And we had a customer say, hey, we think our internet's down and uh, Shopify won't load. And so they, they were fooling, you know, fooling around with unplugging things before they even called us. And so that caused other disruption. But 
I jumped on Twitter and searched Shopify, and sure enough, there were 800 people in the last 12 minutes reporting the same issue. It was a, clearly a systemic issue, and that was something that, because that store manager is running kind of a skeleton crew, they didn't have the time for that. So um, make sure to consider what kind of support you're going to get when you need it if you're uh, you know, purchasing a new system, or if you're sticking with your existing system and wondering why that uh, the support times have increased and the knowledge on the other end of the phone is decreased, that's one of the reasons. Um, loyalty is uh, one of the things out there that can really help you connect with your customers, even if you're using third-party delivery and ordering services. And so there are a lot of, uh, you know, for example, point of sale systems that have a built-in loyalty platform, but you want to evaluate that because it might be that your customer base uh, is more likely to respond to texts than they are to emails. And some of these systems use SMS, some of them use email, some of them use both, but try and do what you can to understand your customer before you decide if you're going to use that, because that's another one of those features that it, um, it has a lot of value if you use it, but if you're not using loyalty, it might be part of the pro platform on one of these systems and you may not need it. You know, or you may be using uh, one of the third party loyalty, uh, you know, apps out there like Level Up or something like that. And I always tell people that, you know, using every feature that comes with your point of sale, just because it comes with it, if it's not a useful or a good feature, it's kind of like wearing the belt that came with the slacks that you bought. It's not necessarily going to match your shoes. So, um, as far as uh, third-party delivery, that's an area where I think everybody has uh, seen, you know, what looked like this kind of wave of support that came from the third-party ordering and delivery apps that hasn't really shown itself to, to, to be quite as easy as we thought it was going to be. And of course, we're talking about the Grubhubs, the Uber Eats, the Skip the Dishes, you know, Caviar, Postmates, all these companies kind of came out of the gate saying, we're going to charge you no fees you know, uh, for the next couple months, or we're going to take on any new customer free of charge for this amount of time. But what you need to realize is that um, they still charge you fees in a number of ways. And sometimes even if you're using the web link that they provided, so a customer goes to your website and the customer uses that link to place their order, and it's supposed to be zero commission, you do need to audit those things because we see all the time, we find customers just got charged 15 or 27 percent on an order that came through their website and that's another issue where the support mechanisms don't operate the same way they did six months ago because now if you call one of these companies um again you get bounced around and it and it's 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 endemic to all of them i would say for the most part i wouldn't say it's any one specific company it's just because a lot of them are very oversubscribed because all of a sudden all restaurants need them whereas previously they didn't. And so they didn't have as many customers and they've not ramped up their, uh, their support mechanism to support the number of customers they brought on during this. Um, another uh, service that you can be using out there, there's aggregators like Chowley and Ordermark. Um, these can be great services. They will take all those third-party delivery services and they'll funnel them in uh, directly into your point of sale but it requires that you be proactive. It requires that you work with them. Um, a lot of these things aren't magic. It requires a lot of reviewing the menus and reviewing the tax rates. We know um, a certain number of customers who have been affected by one of these order, order aggregators, the way they calculate tax is different. And so when the order comes into their point of sale, all of a sudden it can't reconcile. And so it, they end up with a bunch of open checks at the end of the night. Those are the kind of things that you can do on your own just by auditing and using reporting and things like that. And there are some good services out there to do that. Um, on both, uh, uh, you know, for uh, Square, for example, there is um, kind of an order management platform called Cubo that uh, gives you visibility into all the orders from all the different providers. Um, for Toast, there's one called Otter. Otter has an amazing uh, business management tool that um, allows you to see uh, all the orders that are coming into your systems. They show you where they came from, whether they're, you know, Caviar, Uber Eats, or Grubhub. And they tell you what your commission was on that. 
And so you have all that information right in front of you. And if you know that you're supposed to be paying 0% on some of these orders, and you can look in one place to find out that maybe you're not, then all of a sudden you've got some actionable intelligence that you can go to work on. Because if you know, you're doing 800 or $1,200 a night, 15% um, is a big deal. 27% is a really big deal. And so you could be saving yourself some money as long as you investigate the tools out there and um, you know, uh, stay on top of uh, what you're actually getting charged. Um, another thing that we've seen with uh, some of these companies, particularly point of sale, is it used to be they had field teams that could come out and do installation for you or come out and do troubleshooting. We've seen a lot of those teams get um, downsized or dissolved altogether. And so it is good to have someone in your pocket who can um, handle things like networking, handle you know, device installation and things like that. It's not actually, even though we call ourselves science, it's not rocket science by any stretch. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the things that need to get done could be done by competent people who have the time and the willingness to just understand kind of the basic networking principles. Um, but uh, you know, that's something that I always warn people about now is they say, oh, we're gonna go with so-and-so system. I'm like, you know, be careful because they may, they may be four or six weeks out on, to have their team install it. You can get it done a lot more quickly. And if you're saving money by using this system or you're able to bring in more orders by using this system, it puts you in a much better position to be able to get that installation done sooner. Um, Luis, if you go to slide 12. Yeah, um, just a reminder too, like we, we can send out this deck after the call. So if you're taking notes and, or if you forget something, um, it'll all be in there. I know Andy mentioned a few other um, services and softwares that um, are good ideas to use. You can always reach out if, if you forgot what the name of something was. Um, we're happy to answer those questions. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything in the chat that we need to discuss, but I will let you continue. Yeah, I do see a question from anonymous attendee, which we will get to shortly. So okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, but uh, I'll give you a really good case in point on some of the things that we just talked about, though, as far as things like redundancy and third party ordering. Our, our customer in Los Angeles is a growing coffee chain and uh, they're a really an established presence. They've made investments in things like apps. They've made investments in having, um, you know, a robust infrastructure in all of their stores. And all of this really started to pay off for them over the last couple months when there was one Saturday when um, one morning the internet went down uh, to their shop and all of the, they had switched completely to contactless ordering and payment. So that meant everything was coming through the internet at that point. Now, we had set them up with an infrastructure that allowed for them to very easily connect um, a backup connection. And, uh, you know, that day, if we look at the number of orders that they did, that saved about $2,000 in orders on that kind of $40 per month investment. Um, they had the same issues with third party apps is that they, they had their own app that customers could order from, and all of a sudden with contactless ordering, they found that um, a majority of customers were having to use that. In fact, they were requiring it of customers so they could protect their staff as well. And, um, but there was one platform that didn't integrate with another and they were having to do double entry. You know, So an order would come in on a tablet and then someone would have to go over and enter that order into um, their point of sale and when you're doing that, you know, 300 times a day at six different shops, that's a lot of labor. And you also have to deal with things like accuracy and, and, and response. And so we were able to help them uh, find um, a piece of software that sits in the middle that integrated those two and uh, reduce that double entry times like 1800 a day or something like that. Uh, at least if you go to slide 13. Um, one second. So again, you know, you want to ask yourself, what are the features that you really need and make sure that those features are towards connecting with your customers and that they're things that are going to serve customers during this era now. Um, you know, some of the things like guest Wi-Fi used to be a big deal. It used to be a way to um, capture email addresses and things like that. 
right now, if there are no guests, chances are they're not gonna use the guest Wi-Fi. But if you have a strategy that allows you to still accept things like third party delivery and things like that, but then you know, throw something in the, t in the carry out bag or throw something in the delivery order that has your information on it, point those customers to your website so they can um, you know, find you on their own. We find that there's a lot of goodwill amongst restaurant customers right now. They wanna support the restaurant. They want to order directly from you if you can provide that to them. Um, that's even accepting those third party orders while some of them may come with those big fees up front. Once you get those customers uh, into your system, then you can start to figure out ways to do outreach to them and uh, capitalize on that as well. Um, when you think about you know, the return on investment that you, uh, you know, that you want to see from IT. You want to think about it in a couple of different ways. Obviously, if you're investing in an app or if you're investing in a point of sale, those don't Same thing with like, uh, who's supporting your internet hey, Andy, I think you're cutting out a little bit. Okay. One moment. <laughs> We'll give him another couple seconds and then I can jump in if we need to. <laughs> All right, I'll jump in here for a second while Andy's figuring that out. Um, so Andy was talking a little bit about the return on investment and how your team values their time and money. Um, we see a lot of IT directors or VP of operations doing a lot of this troubleshooting and day to day, plugging things in, unplugging things, um, calling point of sale companies to see what the issue is. Um, if an IT director or an IT uh, VP of operations is making 100k a year that's about 50 hour dollars an hour um, and they could be spending that you know working on bigger projects and initiatives um, during that time so um, you know if there's any way of off um, out, off short um, having another employee do that um, while they're you know in their downtime it's definitely um, a good idea to get that under control um, and then another recommendation that we make just when considering different technologies, um, if you are seeing a lot of issues, constant outages, um, if your customers are unhappy, that is definitely an area where you should consider upgrading. So we don't wanna make our customers unhappy. So if, if it means redundant internet connection so that they don't miss orders, um, or if it means setting up a loyalty program to give them discounts, um, there's a lot of things you can do to really upgrade that technology and make sure that um, your, your customers are able to order through the right channels um, and that they're able to uh, interact with your company uh, on a different level. Right, I still don't see Andy here. So I will keep going. <laughs> All right, um, so when we're talking about data and technology to run your restaurant, um, there's a lot of information out there, like Andy was mentioning, do you go with the basic plan or do you go with the pro plan? Um, 
it all sort of depends on what data you're looking for. Um, and so if you're looking for information about your customers or if you're looking for, you know, what items are selling the best, you need to really make sure that you're using that data because if you're not, then why pay for it? I'm back actually. Okay. <laughs> well, we're here we are. <laughs> So I think we've officially stumped the nerds if one of them could not figure out a way to stay on the call. Um, All right, I'm on slide 15, so if you want to take it from there, yeah. I'm talking a little bit about data. And yeah, exactly. I mean, everybody probably has a pretty good idea of their labor costs, but um, just be aware of the tools that are out there to know those things. There are these, you know, there are... Uh, most of these point of sale companies do have some kind of app or dashboard that's specifically meant for managing your stores and will give you visibility into that. It'll tell you how many people are clocked in, how many, you know, um, what you're spending per hour, and it'll show you that juxtaposed with sales. Um, you know, some of the, some of the cloud-based ones have that built in. There are other systems that will do that as well. And uh, some of those other systems include, you know, things like Restaurant 365 or Compete. Those will go a lot deeper than just labor. They, I mean, they do food cost and they'll tell you your overall operational expenses and things like that. And so, um, you know, depending on the size of your operation, uh, some of those bigger suites of software may be, you know, uh, working, uh, you know, to provide you that data if you can't get it from your point of sale on your own. And again, that's one of the reasons we keep talking about cloud-based point of sale systems um, is that, some of those others, you have to either VPN into your network or you have to go to the restaurant to do that reporting. And if you're doing that, it may not be the best use of your time. And that's time that could be spent, you know, innovating. It's time that you could be spending tweaking a menu or kind of optimizing things for delivery and takeout and everything. Um, knowing your customers, I think, is, again, something I mentioned before, before I started to break up. And um, again, you're... If you use a system that allows you to capture that customer information, uh, that will allow you to um, it. It will allow you to have that connection directly with the customer. For example, one of our uh, the other companies that we were in the food foundry with, Bicky.com, they are amazing at providing a CRM for a restaurant that will take all of that third-party data, whether those orders came from Grubhub or Chow Now or um, you know, uh, Uber Eats or whatever, and they'll put it all on a dashboard. And not only will they tell you where the orders are coming from, but who the actual customer is. And once you know who that customer is, then those are the people that they wanna support you already. You can see what their activity is like, and they're most likely to keep coming back and the best part about it is you're not paying 15 and 25 and 30 percent for you know in fees just to hang on to their business and so that's a place we strongly recommend investing and then um you know some of the other things that you can see on these dashboards include your per location sales and they'll send you you know uh they can automate a nightly rock, uh, log uh report that'll show you all the data in one email and things like that if you're not getting that from your current provider um, see if it's a service that they can bolt onto their system. And if it's not, then it may be time to consider moving. Because again, some of these other point of sale systems, they're not, they're not very expensive when you consider the return on investment you would get by actually knowing, you know, how your store is performing as opposed to just by doing it by the feel or doing it, you know, at the end of every month when the accountant closes out. Um, Louise, if you go to slide, uh, down to actually slide 17. Um, and again, the, I think the most important uh, points that we want to impress upon people is third-party apps. It does seem like it's the new way to, to drive the most business, but you wanna make sure you know what fees you're paying and you wanna make sure that you know, um, you know uh, how those fees are charged and when they're charged. Um, internet connectivity, Again, you know, outages can be really disastrous. So you want to keep thinking about uh, ways to introduce uh, redundancy. It's not expensive in the long term, especially when you consider that's where all of your orders are coming from. And then, uh, you know, the POS companies, they can be great for connecting you with a system that works. 
and a system that's capable of you know receiving the online orders but just understand uh or you know you need to kind of level set your expectations as far as the kind of response you're going to get from them these days um this is our favorite photo of uh the i.t director um <laughs> And I don't know if that's what your IT person looks like. That's what we kind of look like. But um, you know, if if you're if you're operating ten or twenty units, it may make perfect sense to have one internal IT person uh, operating all that. But you know, it's still expensive. They still make a salary, and they still um, you know take vacation days, and and they get sick and things like that, like the rest of us. And they can really only do one thing at once. But if you're at the level where you can afford to have that kind of IT leadership central to your organization, then before you add additional people, consider looking to outside companies that can support them. Maybe just take the phone calls or maybe do the field work while they focus on doing the innovation internally. And if you can go to the last slide, Louisa. So again, I know we mentioned it before, but we we're doing a free consultation for anybody on this call. And um, we want to do things like review what you're spending right now, see how you're getting your information, your reporting. We're very happy to point you towards tools that are going to answer some of the questions that you're having right now. And those will be, you know, tools specific to your restaurant. You know, these we've got nothing to sell as far as software or hardware or anything like that. We just want to provide people with good advice. Um, I know we had one question in the Q&A. And remember, you get entered to win a gift card if you ask a question. <laughs> and yeah. if you aren't an operator and you're out there and you're thinking, hey, how can I help restaurants in my neighborhood? Um, questions like that, we, we always love to talk about that stuff. So go ahead and you know throw that in there too. We'd love to talk about it. Yeah. We've got 22 people here and none of them have any questions. It's amazing. You said there was one in the chat. There was, but I can't see it after I, it was in the Q and A. Hmm. Do you see it in the Q and A? I see it. Uh, this is Bethany. The question in the Q and A was, what are some of the tips you're providing to your customers regarding online ordering or third parties? Um, okay, and I rambled on about those things forever, but I'll recap my points because it's a good question. Um, oh, and then I have another great one that came in, but I'll answer that one first. For third party delivery, I think we consider it kind of a necessary evil. Um, if you have a high volume of orders and your point of sale is capable, use an aggregator. You know, if you're, if you're getting orders from like three or more of these uh, third party delivering systems, I would say absolutely uh, consider using one of those aggregators that will accept all the orders and then push them straight into your point of sale system. Because then you get rid of all the tablets and you reduce all those things like double entry of orders and disparities at the end of the day, although those still happen. Um, but in addition to that, uh, I would say use third party delivery as a tool and it's to um, you know, gain awareness and uh, or, or promote awareness of, of your restaurant. And then once those orders come in from those third parties, that's when you wanna be proactive and engage with them. And I realize I'm not telling anybody anything new. A lot of people are telling you the same thing, but it's because it's so important. It's still an opportunity. But then um, look at one of those uh, kind of uh, business management tools. Like I'm not you know, uh, promoting them specifically, but Otter is a good example that business manager tool will show you where all of the orders are coming from and what commission you're paying on them. And that's what gives you actionable data. That's when you say, wait a minute, these were web link orders placed through my website. They went directly into Toast or directly into Upserve and I shouldn't be paying any commission. That's when you have to get on the phone sometimes with you know, either an account representative or you know, the support team. And we do that for customers all day, customers who hire us for like a flat monthly fee, one of the things that we do a lot of is just basically wrestling with the third party delivery orders that aren't uh, charging them the right commission. Um, so I hope that's helpful uh, as far as the third party thing. 
And then I see we have a question from Raul, which is awesome. Thank you for asking it. It says, what about setting up a server on site to run a multi-user QuickBooks for the business? All right, so we've seen companies do this and that goes beyond, I would say, a specific, um, uh, it's not restaurant specific necessarily, but I do know that a lot of restaurants use QuickBooks at, for accounting. And even if they don't, their accountant probably uses it. And I would absolutely say it's more cost effective and efficient to use QuickBooks Online. Um, and you can run multiple companies within QuickBooks Online. And that way you don't have to worry about setting up a server because that requires hardware, it requires support, it requires you know, somebody, a, a woman or a man to come in and install it for you unless you know, you're good at that on your own. Um, and then you have connectivity issues you have to worry about too. One of those is, do you need a static IP in order for other locations to be able to um, report uh, into that server or for other users to be able to connect to it? Or do you need um, you know, a VPN and a firewall and everything in order to secure that? Because that may not, there may not be customer data sitting on the QuickBooks server, but there's definitely there's your data and you need to protect it. And all of the restaurants I know have the same concern as a lot of retailers, which is PCI compliance. And anytime you introduce a new server, especially if it's doing anything financial into your network, you're taking on a lot of risk. And it may not be, it may not be like the kind of risk that's gonna get you sued by somebody, but it's the risk of if that server goes down, then what happens? So then you've got the other costs on top of the server as far as backup and things like that. Um, I hope that that is a helpful answer. I, I always go for cloud uh, and all of the top accounting uh, programs do it. Um, I would say QuickBooks is kind of the gold standard for small business accounting these days, but um, Zero is another one. And uh, I would say almost all of the cloud-based point of sale systems have a native integration with QuickBooks or they use a third party uh, API called uh, Shogo, which um, moves data from your point of sale into QuickBooks or into Xero, for example. And um, it's a much less risky way to do your accounting. And we find that more and more uh, accountants out there are becoming well-versed on more than one system. And they all use QuickBooks online right now, in addition to you know, the traditional QuickBooks, which runs on a desktop. That was a really good question. Thank you for that one. All right, anybody else? I think we covered a lot here. So um, we definitely hope that people reach out and ask us all sorts of questions. I don't think there's any topic we haven't dealt with in the last few months, um, everything changes every other day. And so um, we're, we're always going to keep reading and listening, keeping our ears open, helping our customers. Um, and so we're, we're keeping up with it as much as we can, but we understand the operators have a lot to deal with right now on top of technology. They have all the cleaning procedures and all of the payroll uh, regulations and all of the, the new legislation to keep up with. So hopefully we can at least alleviate some of the stress of dealing with technology on a day-to-day. -day. For sure. Yeah, please head, please don't hesitate to call us, email us. We love helping. We love answering questions. And if we don't have the answer, we will find it for you. All right, Claudia, Bethany, do you want to throw anything else out there? Nope, that's great. Great job, you guys. Thank you so much. Um, I. We will be posting this on eat.news and you can view this later as well. And we will also be following up um, with all the attendees of a recording of this, as well as a promotional offer from Science. Um, and I believe Science is also doing a $25 raffle card. So we will be selecting a winner from uh, the attendees and sharing that out as well. All right. Thank you. Right. Thank you, everybody. Bye.